It was an incredible risk to take, and they chose a football match thousands of miles from home to demonstrate their solidarity with the opposition movement. The national team grabbed world attention by parading green wristbands, the colour of the protest movement. And remember, after all this, they'll have to go back to Tehran and face the music. But if Iran's rulers thought promises and propaganda would close down the protest movement anytime soon, day five of this crisis proved them wrong. In the city the footballers left behind, the demonstrations have continued in support of Mir Hossein Mousavi, the man who claims power has been stolen from his grasp. This time, a silent demonstration, symbolic perhaps of the voice they say has been stifled by a government which is doing all it can to keep control of the streets. But this after Mr. Musavi launched a blistering attack on the credibility of the government and therefore the authority of Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, by alleging the violence was caused by government supporters to smear his followers. <laughs> With foreign journalists banned from covering the street demonstrations, there are also claims that hundreds of reform protesters have been detained by the government, including a well-known newspaper editor, a former vice president and a human rights lawyer. What, what the regime is trying to do is it's trying to uh, squash this movement both, both from above uh, and from below to keep uh, coverage of it from uh, going to the outside world and at the same time to uh, cut off the roots of it on the ground. Again. There are now multiple layers of forces at work on the streets of Tehran. This woman may not mean much to the outside world, but she is the daughter of the former president, Rafsanjani. Her presence out demonstrating is highly provocative because her father is one of the few people with the power to bring down the Ayatollah and reshape Iran.